Tis the season, America. In just 30 minutes from now, the five will be dashing our way to Fox Square for the all-American Christmas tree lighting. All of your favorite Fox News hosts, they're going to be there, and there will be plenty of fun and some surprises. But before we head outside, let's get to some big news of the day. Well, it was not the kind of birthday he was hoping for. President Biden turning 81 years old today, and he just cannot catch a break from the avalanche of bad headlines surrounding his reelection campaign. Just about every mainstream outlet writing articles about his advanced age. Former senior advisor to President Obama, David Axelrod, is calling the president too old, saying Biden has a 50-50 shot at reelection. And check out this Wall Street Journal headline, which says, quote, Biden keeps talking about the old days, Young voters, they don't like it. But the president is brushing off those concerns while at the Thanksgiving turkey pardon. By the way, I, it's my birthday today, and they can actually sing birthday music. I just want you to know it's difficult turning 60. <laughs> difficult. The National Turkey presentation is, and pardon marks the unofficial start of the holiday season. We're here in Washington, a time to share joy and gratitude and have a little bit of fun. This is the 76th anniversary of this event. And I want you to know I wasn't there in the first one. I was too young to make it up. <laughs> President Biden has been trying to just make some jokes about his age, but it's no laughing matter to his White House. According to a new report, staffers have launched their own operation dubbed the bubble wrap strategy in order to protect the oldest ever president from tripping in public, which, I mean, if you remember, Mika and Joe on MSNBC, when he yep. tripped at the, on the stage at that one thing, they said they blamed the staff and said, how dare you not have a way for him to be protected from falls like that? But happy birthday mm. to the president. Yeah. Are you looking at me? Yeah, you can talk about say anything you want. I really wish I was at the children's table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe's age is his biggest liability. Let's be honest, you know, aside from the open border, bad economy. <laughs> The war in Ukraine, the war in Israel, the botched Afghanistan withdrawal, rising crime rate, payoffs from China, the price of gas, and his corrupt family. But other than that, I'm really worried about his age. I think this story is a bit of a scam. There's a way better argument to be made than aging and the numbers specifically, because that can be bounced back to you. I mean, Trump is a few years behind, and you have to, if you focus on competence and function, that's the real argument, because Biden is old, but so is Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. and so is Mick Jagger. And you look at Trump. I mean, Trump is doing stand-up while Joe can barely stand up. As for the bubble wrap, that was a good line, by the way. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> more like trouble wrap. I mean, and what is the bubble wrap protecting? Is it Joe or who's controlling Joe? So I think the greater mission here is to protect those who are behind the scenes, telling him what to do and what to say. I think the feebleness argument now, the age argument, is there to kind of keep us busy and as a misdirection from the fact that there's a whole group of people that are basically directing his every movement. So I'm more worried about that than I am his age. Let me show you the NBC poll a call for here. Trump beating Biden for, with younger people ages 18 to 34. That percentage with Trump at 46, Biden at 44. That's the presidential preference poll. And the 18 to 24 year olds, it's actually 46 to 42. So that's a key voting block for the president. And Jesse, when it comes to a very close election, if you lose just a few of those voters, it could be a bad, bad news for Joe Biden. Yeah, his base is fracturing. The Palestinian situation is not helping. And neither is crime, the border, <laughs> and high prices. But it doesn't also help when every story he tells is about a lunch he had with a segregationist or a satchel page. And these things aren't <laughs> connecting with people. And they used to compare Joe Biden to FDR, remember that? Because of all of his great domestic accomplishments. I think the app comparison is with FDR, but it's about how both of these presidents concealed their health from voters. Remember, FDR was in a wheelchair and always tried to Nobody cover did. that up. Joe Biden, the bubble wrap campaign is the same thing. The guy has brunch lids. If it's not a four day weekend, it's a three day weekend. He never talks to us. So the American people feel deceived and we want to feel connected to the president. We want to feel like we know the president. We understand him and he's in our face. But this guy doesn't ever appear in public. And when he does appear in public, he won't take questions. And if he does, he goes, I'm going to get in trouble. 
So it makes us feel like he's not really in charge. Now, the American people are realizing, and especially the Democrats, that the only reason Joe won in the first place was because of COVID and the FBI. And this election, there will not be COVID and the FBI, well, Musk bought Twitter. So there's not the infrastructure there to help Joe Biden win. And now the focus is on Joe Biden's performance. And everyone's focused on his age, his gait, his speech. And his performance is just not inspiring confidence. So everybody's going to try to hide him. And I just see Donald Trump, who has to run against the world. <laughs> and he has a better shot running against the world than Joe Biden has against running against Father Time. <laughs> because no one's ever beaten Father Time. Mm. Harold Ford Jr., listen to Bill Maher this weekend. He uh, had some pretty tough words for the president. I've said it before. Do I think Joe Biden can do the job? Absolutely. Yes. I don't think he can win the job. And that's what I care about. He's going to lose because the people think he's too old. And perception is reality. I'm sorry. Are you hearing from Democratic circles? He's ref good to be back. He, he reflects what a lot of people in the party believe, what a lot of pe people in the party are starting to believe. And David Axelrod, who said it a few weeks ago, was criticized by some, but privately people are saying this. I think there are three takeaways from, from the poll that I find most interesting. First, he's losing to Trump. Uh, this was not happening three or four months ago in his, his polling data. And the president would always say, I could beat Trump. I deserve the opportunity to go after, to, 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 to have this rematch. Two, the key issues you guys mentioned, put aside the age one, one moment, because I've always thought it was policy acuity more so than, than age acuity or mental acuity that really mattered. You touched on uh, uh, Mick Jagger and others who have, of age but seem more youthful than President, than President Biden. But the border and crime and other issues, these are serious things they've got to figure out how they address. The other thing from the poll, if you take out Trump and you have another Republican against Biden, they win by seven or eight points. If you take out Biden and they go against Trump, they win by six or seven points, a Democrat. So at some point, the, the point that Axelrod was making is one that Democrats are going to have to grapple with uh, sooner, much sooner rather than later. Finally, what President Biden constantly over the last few weeks has pointed to, the last two weeks, has been that on election day, the only data that we have, the polling data, but we have an election day data, and Democrats did fairly well two weeks ago. They won in Virginia, they won that abortion uh, battle in Ohio, and they reelected the Kentucky governor. The question is, does that translate to Joe Biden? Joe Biden argues it does, and his team argues that it does. I don't know. What I do know is the most recent polling data says the president is losing to Donald Trump and one of the most important age groups that has mattered to Democrats the most, and that's that 18 to 34 group. Judge, I'll open it up to you. I'll just point out that in the Fox News poll last week, Republicans were doing better on every one of those important issues than the Democrats, sometimes all of them by double digits. Okay, right now we're talking about Joe Biden, and in the New York Times Siena poll of the battleground states, 71% said Biden was too old. By contrast, 39% said the same thing about Donald Trump. So the public recognizes is that this is about cognition. It's not about age. The public has been watching this man falling down, tripping, stumbling, slurring his words, not going to dinners and international events. And they're not going to be fooled by this new bubble wrap campaign strategy. Uh, we got conned by the first one when it was a basement campaign. But, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I think the American people, uh, what they believe is reflected in this New York Times Siena a poll. Now, in addition to the fact that he definitely is not getting any younger, you know, we can refer to people like Mick Jagger and everybody else. Just last week at the Patriot Awards, we had a 99-year-old World War II veteran who came on stage and he walked out. He didn't stumble out. We weren't like waiting for him to trip. He walked out, gave a speech, ad lib, had the audience standing in a, you know, a standing ovation. That's what America needs, not this man. Andy Negra for president. Andy Negra. Yes, indeed. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.